Hey everybody, welcome to Tabular Riemann Sums. This is Nicholas JMV. Sorry, I got my hat on. It's the coldest day in DC in a while. It's like 20 degrees in my room. I think the heat's finally turning on, but go Irish. Okay, I'm going to make this into two videos actually. So I'm going to show you the Tabular Riemann Sums. You should be familiar with left, right, midpoint already. Okay, so if you're not, you might want to review those other videos I have. There's this type of problem from a table is probably what's going to end up on your AP. Okay, so we're going to do two examples and we're going to look at in the first video when you have a tabular, um, when you have a table where the width of each, each rectangle is the same. So let's look. Suppose we are given the following table of values for x and f of x. Okay, use the right hand Riemann sum uh, with five sub, uh, sub intervals uh, indicated by the data to find the approximate area from 2 to 12. Here's the way I look at this, okay? When I have a right Riemann sum, I know that I'm going to actually skip this first value. This is not going to be included in my answer. And when I do a left Riemann sum from a table, I know that the very last one um, is not going to, that, that, that last entry is not going to be used, okay? So the formula for this is pretty simple. So if we look at it, we're going to have from 2 to 12. That's our x's, so for that whole table, okay? And what we're going to do here is, Remember, it's going to be equal to B minus A over N, which you can tell from the table. You remember, and it's time, you know, your F of X1 value plus F of X2 all the way to the end, okay? That's the general formula, okay? So when I look at this and I do this, I know that each rectangle is 2. That's the B minus, that's B minus A over two, uh, N. But let's write it. You would have B, which is 12, minus A, which is 2 over your subintervals. They said five subintervals using the right Riemann sum, and that's where two is going to come from, times, we're actually skipping this value, and we're going to do times the value at f of four, plus f of six, plus f of eight, plus f of 10, and f of 12. I'm going to put that down here. I ran out of space. Okay. Now, we know the width of each rectangle is 2, so that's on the outside. F of 4 is 13, so we get 13 plus F of 6 is 15 plus F of 8 is 14 plus 9 plus 3, right? The F of 10 and F of 12 respectively. So now I've got all these values. I sum them up and I multiply by 2 and I think you get 108 there. So that's the area that represents that curve, okay? So that's our first video on when the width of each rectangle is the same. Check out the next video where we look at a, uh, a table where the widths are all different.